Clint Screwball, and welcome to the very first episode of Meet the Musicians. I'm here to introduce you to fan musicians who are part of the Star Citizen community. These musicians have in one way or another been inspired by the wonders of the Star Citizen universe, its rich backstory, the thrill of combat or exploration, and of course cats. That's right, everybody likes cats. That's how you make internet videos famous. Oh, and don't forget people who might be pirates or heroes in the universe. This is Miss Jazz, and she is going to be one of my assistants on this show, I can tell already. That's right, you can be famous too. Okay, now, Meet the Musicians is a show about fan musicians from the Star Citizen universe who have bravely and generously decided to share their works with the community and shown the rest of us their love for what they know is the best damn space sim ever. Now, I am honored to have as my first guest, or maybe my second guest, a man whose music you may have already heard from the early days of Star Citizen, but you might not have realized that it was, in fact, a fan who made the music. I'm talking, of course, about Matt Fossa. And now, if you're done, without further ado... So, hello, Matt. Hey, how are you? Good. Hey, thank you for uh, being the uh, first guest. No, thanks for having me, Screwball. I appreciate it. <laughs> so I have a, a bunch of questions here for you, actually. But I guess the first one was, uh, what got you interested in Star Citizen in the first place? Well, I'm, I'm a big lover of science fiction and particularly spaceflight games. Absolutely love them. I have gotten a collection ever since the late 80s of good mediocre and horrible space flight games. I got them all. Everything ranging from uh, Elite to Wing Commander to games that you've never even heard of anymore like Hyperspeed and Mantis hmm. and uh, Sand Warriors. Like I, I ran the gamut. Got wow. Them all. Yeah. So, awesome. Yeah. So uh, what, what, uh, what got you interested in doing music for Star Citizen? Like what made you inspired that way? Well, okay. Um, <laughs> well, I, you know, I'm actually a, an orchestral musician by profession, but I've composed on the side, and I've wanted to do some more writing lately. And just the idea that um, Mr. Wing Commander was making this big comeback and doing this amazing new space game, and I was starting to build up my composing chops. I thought, you know, gee, why don't I just try to throw my name in the pot and see if they would they would accept me? Um, and then not long after, there was a web post on their Spectrum Dispatch that they were originally going to get George Oldsey, the guy that scored the Wing Commander games, to do the soundtrack. I was like, oh, well, pff, I'm blown out of the water there. Forget <laughs> that. But, uh, but, but then... Um, and I guess that didn't end up working out, as we know. But um, I then saw this new show, this Wingman's Hangar show. And I, I did not catch the first episode, the one that was actually called Wingman's Nuts. But I, I did see episode two. And what I saw was that they had this brand new logo um, that was designed by a fan. And right there, I, they, I said to myself, they're taking fan contributions. And they're really serious about it. So write them a theme song quick do it and so i sent a message to them through their old chat system which apparently you know back in the old days was like a direct link to the higher up devs and so my email ended up going onto the desk of sandy gardner and ben lesnick and i said you know i'd like to write some theme music for this wingman's hangar show and ben wrote me back and said um sure we'll listen to whatever you've got and so um immediately i was galvanized into action and I've told the story a couple times. This was a really good time for me to do this as well because I was playing an opera with the Pensacola Symphony. The symphony works with our opera company. Right. And we were doing this opera called The Barber of Seville. Now, what this has to do with anything, as I always say, is the fact that the oboe, which I, I'm the principal oboist of the symphony, and here's my horn right here, um, it doesn't play much in this opera. And so I was sitting for very long stretches of time, three, four songs at a time. And, you know, my friends around me are playing. So I'm sitting there. I'm like, okay, fine. Um, I'm going to block everybody out and just start writing. So I had my sketchbook. Wow. So you I, wrote it during the performances. 
No, not the performances. Oh, okay. I was in big trouble <laughs> during <laughs> rehearsal. Okay. During rehearsal. Yeah. There are enough people who could see down into the pit where I am to where if I wasn't just sitting like this, uh, they'd notice and there would be phone calls. But um, anyway, but during rehearsal, I had my sketchbook and I just blocked everybody out and started writing. And by about all the way after we rehearsed uh, act one and I'd been writing and erasing and writing and erasing, I'd finished this theme that became the main guts of the tune. Wow. What's interesting is you don't actually hear that on the Wingman's Hanger show. You actually have to go and find the, um, the, inter the interview where I introduced the piece to hear the whole thing. All right. Yeah, I've actually listened to the entire piece. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you only hear the the part of it on the uh, on the intro, the trumpet fanfare. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Now, have you done? Obviously, you're a professional musician. Um, have you composed music for other things? Oh yeah, quite a few things. Um, I've always been writing music a little, little bit at a time ever since, really around 1996. And wow. I've written a piece or two a year. I ended up taking a little hiatus from writing for a bit when I got my professional orchestra job and was uh, settling into that and, and things like that and, and also teaching because playing in the symphony is great but it's not a full-time orchestra. Um, I, I cobble together a living by playing in, in three different orchestras and teaching at a college and then teaching private students. So it's like five part-time jobs put together to make a full-time living. Gotcha. But, but anyway, composing wise yeah I'm, I'm all, i was always writing something i've written things ranging from works for, for full band and orchestra to um little chamber pieces to pieces for unaccompanied instruments like just one oboe one flute one violin oh cool uh, yeah and uh, so I've, I've tried to run the gamut um and lately i've been experimenting with writing music for a, that sounds a lot more pop like I'm actually writing a soundtrack right now for an up and coming um, movie, an indie movie wow. called Hollywood Hollywood Girl Goodbye August, which is uh, written, produced, directed, and acted in by an old friend of mine from the Crane School of Music, and uh, she's a, an up and coming producer and writer in in the Hollywood scene, and. Uh, I sent her some examples and she hired me to score this movie, which is a sort of um, a conclusion to her Hollywood Girl series. That's fantastic. You can see on YouTube. Yeah, look it up. You can find that, it there. That's exciting. Wow. Yeah, I will. Cool. Now, uh, cool. so, and you said you were, you were trying new styles of music too. So I guess you normally do a uh, classical and, and you're experimenting with other genres. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Um, and actually, doing this soundtrack is has really forced me. It's a it's a it's a romantic comedy set in you know modern times, and so you know hearing something that sounds like Mozart is not always appropriate. So right, right, um, right. I've got a set of sound samples from a rock music uh, sound pack, and I've been meshing them together along with my orchestral sounds. So I'm doing this sort of a hybrid rock orchestra sort of a thing and it seems to be coming along pretty well cool now do you do that all on the computer or do you play instruments or how does that work well in the case of this movie score yeah it's uh it's all on the computer but um i actually recently did a big project that was a hybrid project where i had live instruments and digital samples all rolled into one and that's my album ah yes forward reflections awesome and i took leading musicians from the pensacola symphony orchestra all of them first chair players you know what that means they play all yeah solos. yeah i used to be a, in high school i played trumpet so i know a little bit about that okay cool cool so yeah um in fact there's great trumpet playing in this um i've also got uh, our lead flute player clarinetist uh lead horn player and lead trumpet um and uh lead cello player and all these people by the way are musicians that you hear on the wingman's hanger theme oh wow so okay cool what, that ties it together so yeah i, I mentioned trumpet a fair amount because everyone hears that trumpet fanfare played by dale regal and jonathan martin da, 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 da. well dale's on this awesome along with yeah my other friends that uh 
that are lead players that participated in that concert. So awesome. So uh, now, is that your first published CD? Yes. Yes, it is. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, maybe I'll do more. more but uh, right now, I'm just glad to have that done. Sure. <laughs> it, was a, it was a big project. As a matter of fact, um, when um, Galactic Inquiry. Mike Moreland's show was just showing up. That was when um, I was really seriously considering this idea, and I don't know if you were there for that, but there was the chat roll would go on in um, in Twitch for a long time, and I just decided, what the heck, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this out there for the fans, and I said to everyone, hey guys, you talk about liking the music I write. If I were to do an album and say charge ten, twelve bucks for it. You know, would you guys buy a copy? And then people were like, "Well, who is this?" I'm like, "Well, I wrote the Wingman's Hanger theme." I'm like, yes, 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 yes. And one of the one of the producers of of, of Galactic Hunger said, "I'd pay twenty dollars for that." <laughs> and so I was like, "Okay, I think I'm going to do this." Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> so, yeah, I remember you actually you you had sent me a message on the forums asking me about what I would get, and I said, "Yeah, I'll I'll get a copy." So that's I'm very glad that you did that. And. So, um, have you done any public performances of Forward Reflections or anything like that? No, but there is one that's coming up. Now, it won't be the entire album because there are some pieces that it just wouldn't work unless I managed to hire a full orchestra. Okay. But there are a couple of pieces that are chamber-ish, and what I may do is like there's there's a piece called Through the Nebula, which features me on oboe actually, and. What I'm going to do with that is just have it for oboe and sound file, and so I'll have the background piped in through speakers, and I'll play it sort of karaoke style, you might say. But uh, that's becoming a trend now with with some music、um, at new music concerts. I'm actually the co-founder of a local new music concert called Composer Fest. Oh, awesome! And yeah, we're in our our eleventh one is coming up. It's an annual event. And it nearly got put off because of hurricanes one year.、Um, it's like、uh, the very first year we had a, a tropical storm that closed our school, and then a hurricane. And I was like, "The heck with this! We're still doing it." And so, third time was a charm.、And、so, <laughs> sheer bullheadedness, I guess. We we got it in, and、um, it's been a success. It's been pretty widely attended, and the audience has been growing.、Uh, You know, for a new music concert to have over 200 people in the audience, that's a pretty big deal. So, we're happy. <laughs> Excellent! Wow, that's a good size. So, Forward Reflections will be having at least two tracks played at that concert. Very cool. Make sure you send me a link, and I'll、uh, I'll put it up. Thank you so much. Thank you. And you can find out more about my album at、uh, www.twinreadsmusic.com. There we go. So you said you've been a professional musician since what ninety six? Well, no, I was in school in ninety six. Oh, okay. I was, I was,、um, yeah, at, at best, very minimally semi pro at that point. But、uh, I've been able to be a full time orchestral musician and teacher since two thousand one, and、uh, that was when I I got just after New Year's in two thousand two. I was appointed principal oboe of the Pensacola Symphony, and then I also at the same time was appointed to a teaching position at Pensacola State College to teach music appreciation and、uh, music theory and、uh, applied oboe, as they call it, just individual lessons. So the so the so I, sorry, go ahead. Oh, so so I moved from Tallahassee. I went to FSU in Seminole. Gotcha. And, so now、uh, your primary uh, instrument uh, is the oboe, but I think you play piano and some other instruments. Just a little bit of piano. I play at the piano at this point. The other instrument I play is the English horn, which it's in the oboe family. It's like the big tenor brother of the oboe. Same fingerings, just longer, darker sound. If actually one of the best English horn solos I've ever heard is in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade,、hmm. and it's the it's the Henry Jones Holy Grail theme, and it's this beautiful ta da 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 da. If you listen, it's after the trumpets play this other little melody. Where they talk about the Grail, and then you hear the English horn come in, and it's beautiful. So <laughs> cool, cool. Now,、uh, do you have plans for for more albums or anything like that? I guess I think you sort of talked about that. Well, it's been in the back of my mind.
mind. Um, basically, the success of forward reflections will really kind of inform which way I go. Um, I would love to do more, but there needs to be people that like my stuff enough to want to buy it. Sure. So, yeah. Um, but I would I would love very much to to do more. But uh, well, that's up to all of you folks out there, really. Well, I hope people uh, I hope people uh, get a copy because it's good music. Uh, you know, I heard the preview of it. Uh, you know, the the different tracks, and it sounded great. Okay, so out, aside from music, uh, uh, are there any hobbies or things that you want to share that you you know things you're interested in? Oh boy. Well, um, aside from being a family man with a daughter, two stepdaughters, wife, um, and uh, currently a live-in father-in-law as well, um, <laughs> I uh, well, let's see. My wife and I actually have been enjoying going to sci-fi conventions. Uh, our her eldest daughter, my eldest stepdaughter, has uh, really been bitten by the bug of anime and going to conventions she does cosplay and stuff like that and you know that just brings back memories from when i was doing that kind of stuff so i, I totally support that um and actually uh, uh my stepdaughter introduced herself to uh, eric and michael and rob at the, the big live stream so you met sarah that way yeah i think i remember um, seeing her poking her head around the corner in one of the videos that's right that's right and then she came and actually stood here and talked for a little bit and yeah so anyway yeah they're all great and uh, so we go to, we, in fact, just this past weekend, went to a convention in Mobile, um, sort of their big Comic-Con, sci-fi con, and had a good time. Uh, Pensacola has its big convention in February, and uh, they started doing that last year. And it was like, it's become like an economic engine for the city. It's, it's great. unbelievable. Yeah. That's great. And uh, yeah, like they, they measured it in like millions of dollars of revenue that came in. Wow. Wow. Because of this thing. That's fantastic. Yeah, the whole city. Well, one of the things that's really cool about Pensacola is when, unlike certain cities where if you have a convention, it's it's usually isolated to a hotel or something. With Pensacola, if you're having a convention, the whole downtown gets involved. This happens all over the place. There's a crawfish festival that happens. Um, there's this thing called gallery night that happens. Like the whole downtown gets involved. It's like, it suddenly, it becomes Bourbon Street in New Orleans and everybody's having a party. And that's what Pensacon is like. It's, it's that's amazing. Very cool. So, yeah, yeah. Now, uh, let's see. What do you look forward to most in terms of gameplay in Star Citizen? Like, do you want to explore? Do you want to mine? Do you want to do bounty hunting, combat, pirate? What, what kind of things do you look forward to? I actually have been coming up with a character for myself. Um, his name is Mitch Sloan. He's a native of the Croshaw system. I don't know why I've been so fascinated with that system. It's because it's one of the first systems we heard about in the... Um, in the history and the time capsule links, the first jump point ever. So I always felt like that system was really important as like the ultimate choke point of all information. It's like that's the first and last place on the way to and from Earth. And so, and I know now there are other jump points, I guess, in Seoul or whatever, but but that one I, I figure is, is going to be considered really special in the lore. And so being from that star system, humanity's first leap into the unknown, that's pretty special. And so I came up with this idea of being a news reporter who's living in the kind of the safe zone. Yeah, it's a core system. But again, being able to say, hey, information has to pass through me in order to get to Earth. So very cool. Uh, yeah. And so doing that and. Uh, He'll be, of course, ex-military because I'm going to play Squadron 42. And uh, I came up with a little backstory for him. I've actually been coming up with a cosplay for him to wear at conventions. Um, excellent, really excellent. Cool. Yeah. So, yeah, in fact, I just picked up a, a steampunk-style pistol that will be part of his outfit. So. Oh, very cool. Uh, are, yeah. are you planning to attend any of the uh, Star Citizen uh, uh, events, you know, the, the PAX events or the South by Southwest or any of that? I, I wish that I could, but they are all so far away from where I live. It's literally a thousand miles or more. Um, but I'll I'll be uh, waving the UE flag here in Pensacola, cheering them on. Cool. So well, I hope we get to see you. At, I hope I get to meet you at one of the events someday. Likewise, likewise. 
tell me about being part of the uh, you know the fan community. That's you know one, you're one of the obviously one of the more well known uh, members of that. Well, yeah. I don't know if I'm so well known now. I had to disappear for a little while to do the album, but still, um, I uh, I've kept tabs and everything, and I will definitely say that I've made some really good friends, um, people that I would call good friends. Uh, the first few folks that come to mind are well, other well-known folks. Like we all just seem to get together and want to collaborate. We've called ourselves the collaborators. That includes um, Jazz Arrow. And that also includes Mark Palman and, and his brother Sarzu, he calls himself, and uh, also uh, Nikki D'Angelo. I mean, all these people, um, Kin Shadow and Legante, you know, all these people I definitely would call friends. And, and also, you know, Eric Wingman Peterson, you know, we, we consider each other friends. We have said so. Um, uh, Mike Moreland as well, you know, so devs and and just fans of the game who have come together. And and as a community, we've done some pretty amazing things. I mean, we all got together and helped Roushis, whose wife was under, who was um, dealing with NASH, non-alcoholic liver disease. Oh, wow. And we did this big, big charity video to try to encourage support. And we also chipped in money to the cause. Yeah, and, I remember, um, is that the one that Ken Shadow did a video for? It wasn't just Ken Shadow. Like, this was, this was a big, motley collaborators collaboration okay where everybody who had a video camera and a green screen that wanted to participate could and we had a couple of guys that actually snagged in-game assets and made uh, um flight videos cinematic flight videos wow and the thing looks like a real movie and that's fantastic uh, i think i think i saw the part that, or a part that ken shadow done i guess i didn't i didn't i guess i missed the uh the main part of it i apologize you can look it up it's called saving citizens it's still there it's on right. uh, nick's channel and uh yeah it, it's it just goes to show what a community like this can do and the the warmth and friendship that's you know in the community particularly in its you know core original members those of us that have citizen numbers below like fifty thousand, especially we remember those you know, we're, it's a pretty tight knit community and, and it's been very welcoming. Everybody is involved and, and talks to each other. I know sometimes it gets a little bit crazy and not so nice, but uh, that's to be expected when you get to be almost a million strong. Yep. Um, yeah. I got uh, dragged into this a little later by Senelea. He's a friend of uh, mine from yes. some, uh, from uh, playing other games together. So he convinced me eventually to, uh, to join up. So I'm, I came in, you know, a little later, but I've enjoyed watching the videos with you guys. Yeah, and it's great to have you in the community too, and, and you're doing videos too, and and just just the overall the the overall feeling of, of warmth in the community and and the camaraderie, the esprit de corps mm -hmm. of all being star citizens. It's it's really cool. Yeah. Now I understand you're also involved uh, on the uh, Descent Underground community. In the community, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm one of the many people sort of jockeying for a position of being score composer, but uh, we'll see, we'll see. Um, I was actually much more prepared to write an orchestral slash rock soundtrack for what was going to be Ships That Fight Underground. And then when Wingman got the official permission from Interplay to use the Descent IP, well, that with that power comes responsibility and you know and a lot of hardcore descent players want their techno soundtrack and mm. right now i'm not really a techno guy i'm an orchestral rock guy but at the same time i'm not giving up i'm gonna keep trying in fact i've got a a thing on my soundcloud called my last college try <laughs> at writing a descent style tune before I just say, you know what, there are better folks out there, but I'm going to keep at it until I get to version 1.0 and let the community judge it and let Eric and Michael and everyone judge it. And if they like it enough and I've learned enough from it, maybe they'll let me in to at least compose music for at least some cutscenes. I don't know. Well, I know you're still, but, you still got the wingman's hangar theme going there. Yeah. And, uh, the heroic flight, excuse me. I got to say it right. Well, the heroic flight, but I mean, look, Let's just be absolutely clear here, and, and yeah, this is the, the printed, self-published score. If you look, I mean, it says very clearly at the top of the page, 
Can you see that? Yeah, it's just a little too close, but I can see it says Wingman's Hangar Show. Yeah, com composed for and dedicated to Cloud Imperium games and the Wingman's Hangar Show. Well, the Wingman's Hangar Show is what's using it. So oh, this is his theme. So anyway, yeah, so it's, I definitely have at least some small part in now Descent Underground by having that. And I'm, and I'm very thrilled and honored that they wanted to keep that. I was actually thinking they would want to change it to something else, but they really like it. And I'm so very grateful that they're using it. Yeah, that's, 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 <laughs> I'm jealous. That's such a badge of honor, but it, you know, in a good way, that's, that's Thank a very, so that's a very good thing. Thank you. I, I appreciate it. And I appreciate them for using it. And I appreciate everyone else for appreciating it. I mean, it's great to have your music loved. I mean, you write something and you put it out there, you want people to like it. Um, and I'm, I'm very grateful that I seem to have, I guess, hit the right nerves with the right people. So Yeah, well, it's got that nice fanfare, that, that introductory element that you hear, at least, you know, at, on the show. But then, you know, it's also got its own, you know, nice, grandiose uh, theme if you listen to the entire thing. Thanks. Yeah, I was truly inspired, and I was thinking all the way back to all those great space flight games that I loved playing so much when I wrote it, and uh, it, it just came to me. It came to me incredibly quickly, too. I mean, I wrote the, the first theme sitting in the opera rehearsal, wrote the second theme, um, yeah, in the second half of that same opera rehearsal, and then came home and crunched it into the computer, and then came up with an accompaniment that sounded appropriate, and... I, I just kind of looked at this and, and my wife looked at it and we were just like, what the heck did you do? I'm like, I just wrote a five minute long piece in two days. So that's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was huge inspiration. I now you got that work. performed by the entire symphony orchestra, didn't you? Yep. Pensacola symphony at their mother's day pops concert. Um, I sent the piece off to the conductor and I just said, you know, maybe you'll like this. And I wrote this email that said, new orchestra piece by me. And I sent the MIDI file, which is what um, Wingman and Viewmaster used originally. And I got an email back from the conductor saying, do you think you could have all the parts ready for our Mother's Day concert, which was two weeks from that time? And I said, absolutely. And I got those things worked out and, uh, and we ran it. Um, and then we, we rehearsed it for about 15 minutes and then ran the piece down and then performed it and at just a few hours later. Very cool. Very cool. That, that's all by itself. That's an honor to have that publicly performed like that. Yeah, I, I was surprised, honored, um, very, very thankful still. Um, I've been well supported by uh, by the symphony. Uh, Peter Rubart, the conductor, seems to like my work. As a matter of fact, he uh, had me write a short little piece just a few weeks ago for uh, an educational concert that the symphony did, and I had to write music that was reminiscent of sound effects on a train. Hmm. And, yeah, so Doppler and so, ships and things? Uh, sort of, yeah. Just um, kind of the idea of you sitting on the train and going chugga, chugga, chugga. Oh, chugga, I gotcha. Chugga. Yeah. yeah, this is a, this was a piece that was aimed at preschoolers and elementary school kids. So, um, and it was modular too. Like the piece had to grow um, with the uh, adding of members of the orchestra because the concert started off with the stage empty, and they brought the percussion players on, and then the conductor said, "Okay, let's find some more musicians. Let's get on the train." And the percussion played, bang, bang. Now that jump. must have been fun. Yeah, it was really cool. Really, that's fun. cool. That's cool. It's, Anyway. Excellent. So. All right. Uh, anything that you wanted to uh, mention? Well, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate this. And uh, I think that we've got an amazing community here at Star Citizen. And I'm so thrilled and honored to be a part of it and, and in the capacity that I seem to be. Um, and I, you know, will do everything I can to keep producing some new material and, uh, Hopefully folks will want to come and check out Forward Reflections and get a copy for themselves, which Definitely. will be possible for me to write more. <laughs> yep. Well, thank you very much for being such an inspiration. I think, you know, there's a lot of other people in the community that, uh, you know, they may have looked and said, hey, this guy got his music out there and in front of the community. And, you know, that may have inspired a lot of the other folks out there, hopefully. 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 Thank you. All right. Cool. Well, cool. thank you very much for your time and for the music and everything.
it's a uh, it's really thank good you. stuff and uh i hope to hear more of it thank you so much and in late breaking news after recording the interview with Matt, he had the good fortune to be featured on Episode 3 of The Wide World of Star Citizen, hosted by none other than Jared Disco Lando Huckabee. That's right. Also, Matt informed me that he is now the official composer for the Android game Dark Dawn Encounters. Apparently, it's a third-person space sim featuring 3D fleet actions with big ships, and is available now on Google Play, and maybe on Cat's Play. He said that the current version has placeholder music, but the next update will include his soundtrack. You are very silly. If you like live music, Composer Fest 11 in Pensacola, Florida is coming up soon on Sunday, September 20th. For more information, please be sure to check the events calendar at pensacolastate.edu. Lastly, please be sure to watch the credits because you'll get to hear the full-length performance of the heroic flight. And don't stop there because if you keep watching, you'll also get to hear previews of music on Matt's new album, Forward Reflections. This is the album you're looking for. <laughs>